What I'm about to say to you is completely counterculture to everything that the world tells you about dieting. Because what it comes down to is I don't care how many calories you're letting yourself consume, what intermittent fasting window you're following, what your macronutrient breakdown are of protein, carbohydrates, and fat, because what really matters to me are the effects of manipulating your diet in order to try to control your body's ideal physique into something that may not be maintainable or healthy at all for you. What I really care about are the long-term consequences of this manipulation, which is dieting, that it's going to happen to here and here that you may go on to struggle with for years. You need to know a little bit about my background for context, and then I'm going to share my major concerns about diet culture, and then break down what's wrong with the three most popular diets, and then I'm gonna wrap it all up in how I currently eat, and what I do recommend doing as far as your relationship with food. Addiction is something that runs in my family. I grew up around secondhand smoke until I moved out of the home. Alcoholism runs deep and it has taken early lives of several family members. My grandmother grew up very poor and I saw firsthand what it looks like to hoard food and to overeat at the expense of lack of nutrition simply because those who finally got food sometimes really want to use it as a way to cope and as a form of comfort. My rebellious teenage self wanted to flee as far from that type of identity as possible and I got consumed in the idea this fantasy that if I could just be really super healthy and skinny, then I would be happier and better at everything. So I decided I would memorize the caloric intake of every food out there. I can categorize every food, whether it is a protein, carbohydrate, or fat, and know how many grams I'm consuming. These are details that don't just leave your memory once you know them, they will haunt you. I was able to control my food intake and use this as a leverage of my identity and pride and I'd feel better when I knew exactly what I was eating and if I could creep that down to be even less, then oh, I am doing great. These were lies of the enemies. They were holding me back and I was in bondage to a different type of control. There wasn't really a name for it back then, but now it's called orthorexia. This is an obsession with healthy eating to the point that it becomes very unhealthy. Do you remember when self-righteous Paul was on his way to Damascus and then God blinded him with a heavenly light only to open his eyes so that he could finally see that his identity and self-worth was in Christ alone? Well. I never had an encounter like that, but clearly over the past 15 or 16 years, God has changed me and it feels like when a hiker carries a really heavy pack with messy stuff hanging off everywhere, that slowly over time, he has been pulling off and removing these weights and releasing me from this bondage that I didn't even realize how bad and heavy it was. But know that it has been a long process to get to a healthy relationship with food where I am now. But still, a decade and a half later, I still remember all the calories and macronutrient content that I was so obsessed with and self-focused on all those years back then. I've talked to a growing number of women who have a compulsion to want to over-exercise in order to maintain or lose their weight. Or they used to do bodybuilding or figure competitions. Or they tried cutting and bulking because an influencer recommended them. Or they grew up doing ballet, which supported a really lean body type. Whatever your historical background and relationship with food is, there is a commonality that when you focus on changing something drastic in your diet, you become so inwardly focused on what you need to do that you can make such 
a idol out of it that it becomes compulsive. And I'm not saying that everybody has an eating disorder, but what I am saying is that I have seen disordered eating patterns to the point that it's really concerning because of the way people grew up or diets that they have tried. This is why I don't recommend even getting into this cyclic circle because once you're in it, it's hard to get out of it. My fitness pal or other algorithm trackers out there will spit out numbers for what you should eat for your protein, carbs, and fat and for your calories each day. But what they're not taking into consideration besides your gender, height, and weight is your actual activity level throughout the day. Are you a mom who's getting up and down all day, doing diaper changes and picking up toys, or do you have a bit more of a sedentary lifestyle at a desk? It's not considering your unique genetics or what time of the month you're at because your caloric and macronutrient and vitamin nutrients actually change over the course of your menstrual cycle and especially when you're pregnant or breastfeeding postpartum. Those trackers aren't doing you justice for what your needs actually are. Don't take anything I ever say as the supreme authority. Instead, let's just look to Jesus and what he says about food and anxiety and what we should think about and concern ourselves with. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? Some of my original nutrition content that I shared on Glow Body PT years ago doesn't accurately reflect my relationship with food now. I don't count my macros every day, but if I did, the rate right around um, 50% carbs, 30% protein, 20% fat. I think, oh, okay, I had two pieces of white bread, bam, bam, one, two. I had a, um, let's say a sweet potato, three, a half a cup of rice, Four. This is how you can add up. Say it was a really big sweet potato, would add another carb, five carbohydrates. And then I had a little dessert after dinner. So I had two tiny cookies, one, two. Now I literally don't care about that anymore. God has just swept that taken up mind space from my life and it's not even a concern of mine. At one point I used to weigh myself every single morning, no clothes just to assess where I am. And you know what, it would affect my mood for the rest of the day. Then it changed into weekly. I'll only weigh myself on Saturdays. Now, I haven't weighed myself for the past four years unless I go to the doctor's office because I really don't care about what that arbitrary number says. I care more about how my clothes are fitting and how I'm feeling and how I'm performing. When you bring your idols, and if you don't know what your idols are as far as what is taking up your brain space and time and anxiety and maybe altering your social settings if you're concerned about what you're going to eat at a certain restaurant or should you bring this to an event because they might not have anything healthy. If you're being consumed by these thoughts or you think that there's nothing wrong with you, I encourage you to bring it to the feet of the Lord. Ask him to highlight the prideful sin patterns that you may be having surrounding food and ask him to just remove it from your life over time because I am living proof that even if you feel like you can never break free from over-exercising or whatever it is you're struggling with, through God, you can. Let's break down the three most common diets that women message me about. The first one is carnivore. This is fine for a last case scenario, as in you're trying to survive. When women eat a diet that consists solely of meat, fish, eggs, a little bit of dairy, they are missing out on massive quantities of vitamins and micronutrients and antioxidants that are super bioavailable and voluminous in your foods that come from plants and beans and nuts and seeds. You're also missing out 
on the toothbrush that's going through your insides to clean you out. I'm talking about fiber. So if you want to feel like you are cleaning out your insides from toxins that we are exposed to on a daily basis as moms, I'm talking about plastics, arts and crafts, glue, paint, just dandruff that's in your house. If you want to clean that out, you need to have that toothbrush and you get that fiber from foods that are found in plants. You're completely depriving yourself of tons of nutrients that are healthy for your hair, your skin, your healthy longevity if you restrict yourself to just eating foods from animals. Yes, you're going to lose weight. You know why? Because carbohydrates get stored in the body as glycogen. Glycogen is kind of like a cup that holds water. Glycogen is going to hold much more water, but if you're not consuming carbohydrates, you have less glycogen molecules. This means you're going to see a decrease in weight fast, a decrease in water weight. You're also going to see a decrease in body fat. You're gonna say, oh, carnivore diet is really working for me. Yeah, because you put yourself in a caloric deficit. You cut out all these great food groups now you're only eating meat, which is going to likely increase your cholesterol and make it harder for your heart to work really efficiently, more difficult for all of your body's metabolic systems to be on fire and healthy and for your brain to be operating at the level that it should. So if you want to do that, in order to lose weight and see a lower number on the scale at the expense of your overall health, that's a decision you're making. The second diet that I have problems with is vegan and vegetarian. I know that they're different, but I'm gonna lump them together for the sake of brevity. Unless you are extremely smart and organized about creating complete proteins in your diet from plant-based foods, which isn't the majority of vegans and vegetarians, then it's going to be extremely hard for you as a woman to consume adequate calcium, iron, zinc, and the array of B vitamins. When you're missing out on these things, your bones, metabolic processes, and your protein synthesis is going to suffer, especially as an active fit woman. So if you don't wanna feel brain fog and you want to look toned and strong and be vibrant and energetic, I encourage you to have animal products in your diet on a pretty much daily basis. Intermittent fasting is extremely popular right now and I don't necessarily have major concerns with it nutritionally unless you are a breastfeeding mom or you're currently pregnant, then stay away from intermittent fasting. But what I have issues with is the deception behind it. That being told that if you eat in this five or eight hour feeding window, that is going to be the trick that is going to allow you to shed excess fat that you've been holding onto for all of these years. When in reality, the only way to lose weight is through a caloric deficit. This means consuming fewer calories than your body currently needs to stay at its current weight. When you consume fewer calories and you burn more through exercise, your caloric balance will be lower. That's how you lose fat. It takes a 3,500 calorie deficit to lose just one pound of fat. When you cut out your snacking after dinner and in the evenings, no more ice cream, popcorn, chips, cookies, and you're no longer having creamer or sugar in your coffee, you're not eating breakfast anymore, and you only have this little bitty, itty bitty window to eat your day's worth of calories, of course, you're putting yourself in a caloric deficit and you're going to lose weight. Great, until your children start asking questions. Mom, why aren't you having popcorn at the movies? Why are you only allowing yourself to eat at certain times of the day? I think it's a bit controlling, rules oriented, and it doesn't make sense from a common sense point of view is this something Jesus would do with his life? And I think it's especially dangerous to try to use intermittent fasting or just say, oh, I'm just fasting in general, not as a way to come into prayer and to grow closer in your relationship with the Lord for limited time periods. But when people try to use this long-term and make something that is all about their body and weight loss and self-idolatry and turn it into something religious, completely stay away from that. So what should you eat? Don't overcomplicate it. 
You should eat the foods that God gave us. And that means mostly plants, some animal protein. I eat a large breakfast every day that's going to keep me satisfied until lunchtime. And then it's okay and good to come to lunchtime hungry. Your body needs to know what the difference is between hungry and satisfied. Otherwise, you're gonna be in a constant state of grazing and I'm willing to bet you're never going to actually meet your micronutrient needs. And when you're deficient in vitamins or micronutrients, you are going to have cravings that you feel like you can't get out of them. So head to your lunch hungry. I have an afternoon snack. It's something that I do with my children. It helps not be cranky heading into dinner. And I think the same goes for me too. I don't wanna be antsy when Luke walks through the door because I've been cooking dinner and I haven't eaten since noon. So I have a good nourishing, healthy afternoon snack. Eat a dinner that fills you up. You wanna have produce on your plate and nothing in excess. A variety is really healthy. I'll always have an evening treat or dessert. I have a small glass of wine once up to three times per week. And this has been really good maintainable balance for me and my family. There are no foods that are off limits. I'm no longer chained to what I can eat based on how much I exercise or how much I'm going to exercise tomorrow. Those are thoughts that I used to struggle with and used to be a burden to me. And now they're not even a thought that I have anymore. The reason that serving sizes aren't listed in the mom cookbook is because your caloric intake and needs change over the course of different seasons of motherhood and over the course of your menstrual cycle. This is why you need to be considerate of when you're actually hungry or when you're just bored or when you're fed up with everything that's going on in your home and you're overstimulated and you wanna eat because it will calm you down. Or if you're eating out of habit or if you're eating because you're in a social setting. All of these things are okay sometimes, but you do wanna be aware of why you're eating and not just eat mindlessly. The more you can notice when you're hungry, what you've eaten, what keeps you fuller longer, the easier it becomes to naturally eat intuitively so that you are no longer chained down by made up rule systems that keep you in this diet culture and stress you out and bring you needless anxiety and the more free and happy you can feel about your natural and normal relationship with food that includes all different food groups when you wanna eat them. Every woman should know the basics about nutrition for the female body. And these are things that I teach you in my workout programs and in the mom cookbook. But especially if you are a mother, you may feel even more of an obligation, if you're anything like me, to be modeling like a mirror what healthy eating looks like because you know when your children grow up to be young men and young women that their childhood experiences and influences and what mom thought of her body and how she talked about food and what she served you, it's going to have a long-term lasting impact for better or for worse. So you get this opportunity as a mother to show your children what it looks like to have a healthy relationship with food so that it won't be so hard to break down chains and historical problems and diet culture mentality in their life when your children grow up. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. Even better though, subscribe. Join me for more free, valuable content and let me know in the comments what was most impactful or stuck out to you? Is there anything that I left out that you wanna add? I read all of your comments and I always love learning from you. Bye ladies.